pop quiz time. What technology is going to help usher in the next industrial revolution? Want another hint? Okay, it's easy to install, can be integrated into legacy systems, and transmits power and data over a single cable. All right, you guessed it. Single pair Ethernet. It was probably that last bit that gave it away, right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, yes, we are talking about single pair Ethernet. Tim Curtin from Cinch Connectivity and I explore the what, where, and how of single pair Ethernet and how this technology is changing the landscape of smart building and industrial applications. We also investigate the different types of single pair Ethernet and the benefits of Cinch Connectivity solutions in this arena. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Cinch Connectivity. Hi, Tim. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi. Nice to be here. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. So we're talking all about single-pair Ethernet. But first, Tim, what exactly is single-pair Ethernet? Well, single-pair Ethernet, also known as SPE for the abbreviation, it's a new solution for connecting Ethernet devices, especially in hard-to-reach places. So a key tool for introducing Ethernet into these places that have traditionally used standard Ethernet or other communication standards, for that matter. So single pairs, smaller, lighter, easier to manage than uh, the traditional Base-T networking cables can provide access to previously hard-to-reach locations, as I mentioned. It's a two-pole conductor, so the delivers space savings of more than 50% over its legacy in both panel and PC board installations. Single pair can also provide power over the same set of wires to small devices. So power over data line eliminates the need to provide a separate power connection next to the Ethernet connection. It can deliver up to 52 watts, as a matter of fact, over a single pair of wires, which simplifies the installation of remote devices. All right. So, Tim, why should we use single-pair Ethernet? If you look at a traditional Ethernet cable, typically they'll have up to eight copper wires internal to that patch cord or four twisted pair. With single-pair, it is exactly what it says, a single-pair, two interconductor copper wires. So a lot less weight to ship and handle, less copper, especially these days, means a lot less cost. Cables are easier to bend and route into walls, makes for space savings and easier installation. And this small form factor uh, allows for interfacing plugs and jacks into smaller and smaller devices. All right. So, Tim, there has been quite a lot of interest in SPE recently. Why do you think that is? Well, when you start to look around, you'll see more and more devices being digitized and added to the network to make intelligent buildings even more smarter. Sensors and devices on machines and processing units are one of the largest growing sectors for the Internet of Things. This makes the network engineers being tasked with connecting a, a large number of sensors, actuators, controlling devices, but they also need to do it in a way that's uh, ease of scale because they're doing it so fast and in a cost-effective way and a secure way. So SPE connectivity can be used for things like smart lighting, security, Monitoring control systems, think about fire alarms, elevator controls, other various access controls can also enable power transmission with speeds up to 1,000 base T over that single pair of copper wires. Typically, these guys are rated in their temperature range of 20 degrees Celsius to plus 60 C because they are going to be inside of a controlled building. That makes sense. Now, there are different types of single-pair Ethernet technology as well, right? So talk to me about that. That's true. So there's several different types of single-pair technology, and each version is sort of dedicated to a different industry, if you will. The ones that made it to actual production are IEC 63171. There's a Dash 1, a Dash 2, a Dash 5, and a Dash 6 in the marketplace today. Although there's these four different interfaces defined, two of them are recommended for use. The Dash 1 
for automated applications such as uh, smart buildings and such, and the Dash 6 for more harsh environment industrial Ethernet applications. So the Dash 1 and the Dash 6 can both support up to 2.5 gigahertz of data transmission. So, Tim, what industries are you seeing the biggest growth for single-pair Ethernet? Well, as you look at intelligent buildings, a lot of it's keyed around uh, cost savings and how do, we, how do we manage all that. So you think about things like automated curtains and blinds and areas of high sunlight for heating, cooling reasons. You look at uh, badging systems you know, for security for employees coming in and out of a building. Multimedia is another area we see you know, with the PA systems and sound masking and just audio video in general. Cameras, CCTV, we see a lot of that usage tied to this technology. Other sensors for you know, occupancy of a building. You need to know who's in the building and who's not in the building, especially in emergency situations. Temperature and humidity, brightness of the lighting can be adjusted, as well as air quality and you know, fire detection, CO2 monitoring for safety reasons. Data collection and analysis is another big area we see. More and more digital signage is showing up, not only on highway billboards, but in these office buildings or outside the office buildings that are tied to this type of networking. Everybody has their own Wi-Fi or distributed antenna system tied to the building these days. And even manual controls that you have to hit a switch or push a button can be tied to this type of networking. Tim, is single-pair Ethernet going to be a full replacement for legacy Ethernet now? That's a good question, and, and that's the fear of a lot of folks, that they have to rip out you know, the legacy equipment that they put in 10, 12 years ago. So single-pair Ethernet can use the same transmission data in both directions, just like its predecessor, but it, the predecessor uses up to four pairs of internal copper conductors for sending receiving channels. These smaller devices we're talking about require a whole lot less data and channels so that these Ethernet runs can be simplified down to two conductors or a single pair. So it's really not seen as a full replacement of the legacy Internet, but rather sort of a bridge to consolidate everything together under this Ethernet technology. SBE can be supplemental to the existing network, can allow for a continuous connection from the sensor to the cloud using the Internet protocol. So it also allows for connecting individual devices directly at the sensor and actuator level. And as adoption grows and uh, more devices enable single-pair connectivity, this will allow for things to get smaller and smaller within the networking equipment and the sensors themselves. The number of devices will just continue to grow and increase, driving the need for simpler and smaller connection hubs. So some of the other things have tied to that, your standard RJ45, you know, with those eight copper conductors and single pair can coexist in the same existing hubs with a SPE and uh, increase the overall functionality. So what the single pair does is it simplifies the point to point connection where it has the advantages. Legacy Ethernet cannot go over 100 meters for data connectivity. So depending on the amount of power needed that can ride along with that data, single pair Ethernet can connect devices over several hundred meters for distribution, so much longer runs than standard Ethernet connectivity. So you can essentially use this as an umbrella, simplifying your network. It also reduces the cable traces, so the environmental guys will like that because it reduces the potential for a fire loading as well throughout your building with less and less cable. And uh, again, it can serve as that umbrella for the point-to-point -point communication to the cloud. So everything's coming up into the single pair hub and then back and forth to the cloud. So for building automation, the version dash one again is recommended as a standard. You can have a locking plug and jack. It's about the size of a fiber LC connector if you're familiar with that. So it's a much smaller size than your standard RJ45. So Tim, what kind of connectors and cables should we be considering here? Well, if you look at both the plugs and the jacks, I said they're much smaller size. We're going to focus on the Dash 1 that's approved for automated buildings and such. Again, the keys are the, the space savings and the lighter weight, the reduced complexity of the design overall. The longer reach and less cost, of course, is a big driver for this. We prefer the shielding on there for improved electromagnetic interference protection. You can have an optional uh, light pipe for those who are familiar with a LED type indicator on the jack side that can be integrated as well. And then the cables can be customized to, to any length 
as I said, they can go several hundred meters in the single pair Ethernet. So, you know, these can be whatever you need them to be, you know, three meters, 10 meters, several hundred meters, terminate the jack on there, much longer reaches. And again, they're used for, you know, think about uh, heating, cooling, sensors, intelligent lighting, security systems, any access control that you weren't able to reach before. These guys can do that. Okay. So, Tim, talk to me about some of the potential use cases where single pair Ethernet could make a big difference. Well, a lot of our customer requests are coming in with, uh, we see, think about emergency or exit signs and such that don't need a whole lot of data, things like water sprinklers throughout the building, intelligent lighting. When somebody comes into a room, the light comes on, you know, if they haven't sensed uh, movement for a while, the light goes back off, cost savings for the building as a whole. We've even talked to people about, you know, mood lighting and such within a business, various colors, various lights in different locations that can intelligently come on and off or change color even, depending on the particular customer coming into that. And it all ties in to the cloud and can be controlled remotely as well as another key benefit of this. All right. So, Tim, before we go, can you recap your main points for me? Sure. So, in summary, as we know, smart buildings will continue to require more and more networking and IT teams to connect and support huge growth and sensors and controllers that connect devices and automate different processes as we go along here. Single pair Ethernet or SPE, the versions IEC 63171-1 is the one selected for smart buildings, can handle up to one gigabits and also allows for longer reach than standard Ethernet. It can do the same as standard Ethernet up to 40 meters with one gig, but where it really shines is beyond that. It can go up to 1,000 meters with uh, 10 base T lower data rate, which most of these smaller devices only need that 10 base T. It can consolidate legacy networks and protocols into a, a single centralized Ethernet system. It enables new markets for the Internet of Things. And you think about smart sensors, streaming video, further data analytics. You think about all the AI growth and data collection that's going on. It can tie into that. Higher density of, of connectivity and all the... Uh, Hardware and the rack units, smaller footprints overall. So there's a lot of space savings with these smaller diameter cables. There's a large weight reduction in the cable runs, easier bending and routing of the cords. Remote access is a big thing that's desired by people. Remote control of building parameters. And say you forgot to shut something off or everybody's out of the building and you need to check on something, you can dial in. Potential for remote power to be delivered over these same Ethernet data lines, lower cost overall and less copper for longer runs with a single pair Ethernet. And then you can combine all these protocols of existing, again, not replacing, combining into one seamless communication layer that travels back and forth to and from the cloud. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you. And I hope this was helpful. Those can learn something from this. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Cinch Connectivity. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.